the N64 rumble pack. It's a removable device which connected to a controller's port. It supplied force feedback from games which supported this function. Since its release, every game's controller since has had some form of force feedback, so it was pretty much a pioneer of its time. It gave gamers a more immersive experience to their gameplay, which we all take for granted today. The Rumble Pack was originally introduced with the awesome Lilac Wars or Star Fox 64, depending on where in the world you'd come from. If you're not familiar with the game, you can watch my review of the game here. The Rumble Pack runs off of two AAA batteries, but who wants to use batteries? The good news is, you don't. I'll show you how to mod your Rumble Pack so you can use it batteryless. Why would you want to do this? Well, you can save money on replacing batteries, and you don't have to worry about the batteries leaking if you forget they're actually in your Rumble Pack. It's a really simple mod to do. It will take you literally 5 minutes to make your Rumble Pack a batteryless version. I'll switch to an overhead view now and show you how to do this simple mod. To undertake this mod, you will need a 3.8mm game bit, your Rumble Pack, some solder, and a soldering iron. You don't necessarily need, but I would strongly recommend some long nosed tweezers. Start by unscrewing and removing the two game bit screws at the top of the rumble pack. Remove the battery cover and separate the rumble pack. The motor with a weighted rotor is in one half. The other half contains the circuit board. Remove both of these from the case. Move the case aside and set the lot down with the battery springs facing towards you. You will need to desolder this resistor and resolder it into its new location on the circuit board. Turn the circuit board over and bend the resistor leads so they are at a 45 degree angle to the board. Heat one of the solder points with your soldering iron and start to push the resistor through the board. You can use your fingernail to help pull the resistor out as you heat the solder. Be careful as the resistor will become hot very quickly. Since I don't have fingernails long enough to do this, I resorted to some long nose tweezers. Once your resistor is out of the board, you will need to straighten out the leads on your resistor. Once you've straightened the leads out, tint both ends with a little solder. You will be soldering the resistor to its new location here and here. Apply a small amount of solder near the F1 pinhole and also to the top hole next to the connector for the motor. You can solder whichever lead you choose first. This is the order I chose to solder it in. It won't make any difference if you solder the other lead first. Bend your resistor into place to cover the remaining hole, then solder the resistor to the board. I gave the resistor a little wiggle with my finger to check that it had properly soldered in place. Once you are happy with your soldering you can reassemble your rumble pack. This is the reverse of how you took it apart. Make sure the circuit board locates properly and locate the motor wires into the two prong holders. Clip the case back together. Put the two game bit screws into their holes and screw them tight.
Put the battery cover on and you're now done. And that's all there is to it. Your rumble pack will now run without batteries in it. Thanks for watching.